Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be here to present three of our major works on NLP and applied linguistics. Let's begin with our first work entitled Text Categorization Can Enhance Domain Agnostic Stop Word Extraction. This work is done with the collaboration of Masakana. Let's begin by defining what stop words are. So stop words are words that do not contribute to the meaning. They include prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions, common adverbs, and so on. Extracting them is important for NFP, for particularly for topic modeling. Methods mainly include statistical approaches like TF, IDF. The key point here is that limited works has been made actually to extract stop words based on their semantic features. We are trying to solve this. Before we begin, let's actually find out what Masakana is. Masakana is our collaborator for this work and is an African grassroots community that focuses on the development of natural language processing for African languages. It develops open data sets and machine learning applications for NLP in Africa. Their projects are collaborative and are posted online under permissive licenses on GitHub, on Hagen Pace, etc. So it is very important to highlight that some of their data sets are built upon common crawl, large scale dat database that is created based on the uh, scraping of public web pages. And their, most of their members use huge funding opportunities like Lacuna Fund. To join Masakana, you can actually access the URL below. So we will be using three datasets for our work. The first is Masakana that actually includes uh, a number of, uh, uh, of news outlets in 16 major languages, uh, including English and French. And actually what it does is that it classifies news articles into categories like sports, business, entertainment, and politics. The second data set is the uh, African Stop Words project. And it is just a, a, a crowdsourced database of uh, lists uh, of curated stop words for African languages, mainly lists that are made using TF-IDF. So actually, currently, uh, it includes uh, stop word lists for 10 languages. The third database is Masakabos. It uh, just provides a part of speech database uh, for 20 diverse African languages, and it follows universe dependencies guidelines for consistent part of speech annotations. Our hypothesis here is that uh, stop words exist in any text regardless of its topic, and stop words are constant terms across a categorized text corpus. So we are trying to verify this assumption to nine African languages, as well as for French. Uh, actually, we begin by collecting stop words, by actually scraping all the stop words that exist in the African stop word project, uh, getting the French stop words from another database called stop words ISO, and we use Masaka Bus uh, to get stop words uh, as the terms that with auxiliary pronouns, conjunctions of coordination and subordination, determinant and particles. So what we do, we verify the existence uh, of every stop word across the categories of Masaka News. So uh, we standardize the, the text by lowercase and removing punctuation, and we identify uh, the existence of every stop word in every category for every language. So that's what we do. Uh, what we found out is that we found out that uh, most of the stop words exist in all the categories as shown in green, which prove that in part that 
our assumption is true. But we found out that some of the stop words only exist in one category. So if these actually are only stop words, so our assumption probably is false. But if these stop words are not actually true stop words, then our assumption is true. And text categorization can help actually refine the results of TF IDF based uh, stop word extraction. So what we found out is that stop words identified in one massacre news categories are mainly uh, not stop words. So they are actually verbal cues, numerals, adverbs. And this proves uh, the consistency of our work and actually uh, provide promising direction for future research on stop word extraction. Let's move on to our se second work entitled Tunisian Normalized Pronunciation. This work was done with the association of uh, the Derja Association, a nonprofit uh, actually uh, organization uh, working for the promotion of daily use of Tunisian Arabic. So you can ask me why we need a normalized pronunciation for Tunisian. Actually, text-to-speech mainly rely on standard pronunciation of words and not on the phonology of a particular dialect. For example, we will not find the French of Marseille uh, in a text-to-speech service. We will find French of France or French. Uh, well, what we found out is that several low-source languages, including Tunisia, do not have normalized phonology. That's a problem. Several linguists, to solve this problem, promote the use of Tunisian dialect as a koine. A koine means de facto standard for Tunisia. Well, the theory of the koine marginalizes 80% uh, of the Tunisian population because 80% of the Tunisian population do not speak as, uh, as the inhabited in, in, uh, inhabitants of Tunis do. So the key point here is that we need to normalize phonology for Tunisian that considers every dialect. So what we do is that we collected the features of uh, the phonology of every dialect of Tunisian. We have here seven dialects, Tunis, Sahel, Sfax, Northwestern, South, Eastern, Southwestern, and uh, Judeo Tunisian, seven dialects. And actually for each dialect, we, we find out the characteristics uh, of uh, of the phono phonological features. To, to actually get a normalized uh, phonology, we use three rules. Uh, well, the first one is that the rules should exist uh, in four dialects or more, so, so that they can be actually adopted uh, de facto. If a widespread rule, that means the rule that exists in four dialects or more, does not exist, the rules that simplifies the definitions of other rules or reduces the number of exceptions is adopted. If this does not happen and we, we find a controversy, so we adopt the rule that is closer to the one of other Maghrebi dialects, including Moroccan, Algerian, and Libyan, and Mother Standard Arabic. Uh, after that, to actually verify our, our choices, actually, uh, we actually ve verify the accuracy of the rules by observing audio recordings of phone calls uh, in a database called the IWSLT Tunisian Arabic Shared Task Training Data provided by the Linguistic Data Consortium. Well, the findings actually uh, found the existence of most of the standard Arabic uh, actually uh, phonemes with a few actually additions that we will explain. So actually, one, one uh, very interesting uh, addition or actually uh, difference from Middle Standard Arabic is the fusion of the da, dad, and the va, va. And actually, they are both pronounced in Tunisian Arabic as uh, va. Uh, we have also uh, the existence of germ germination, like in Model Standard Arabic. 
seen in words like had that to threaten. And we find that uh, Tunisian includes plot and stops, but actually uh, in some cases, in most of the cases, they are replaced with the ha, like yishel instead of yishel uh, in modern standard Arabic. Yishel means to ask. Yeah. Actually, when uh, we see the qaf versus ga uh, sounds in Tunisian, we found that the pronunciation may vary uh, according to regions. Sedentary varieties use ka, where uh, nomadic varieties use ga. Uh, but actually, we adopted the qaf because the qaf exists in four dialects, versus three for uh, uh, for the gas. Uh, however, we find that several words, particularly agricultural terms, consistently use ga instead of ka, regardless of the dialect. And this means that there is indeed a ga sound in Tunisian. For example, begra, cow, digla, date fruit, actually gen, horn. And we find out as well that actually there are some emphatic minimal pairs in Tunisian. Actually, T Tunisian Arabic has several emphatic uh, consonants like ba, la, ma, na, ra, la, that replace their known emphatic counterparts when it is, they, are, they are adjacent to an a sound by contra. Uh, by, by opposition to a sound, so just with a sound. This phenomenon is not common in modern sound Arabic, but exists in other Maghrebi dialects, including Moroccan. Yeah, comparing the vowels, actually, uh, uh, to to actually uh, uh, differentiate between uh, the the, the uh, the emphatic minimal pairs and their non-emphatic counterparts. Actually, we had actually differentiate between the A and the A sound. Actually, and that's why Tun Tunisian, according to our convention, despite the theory of the Imala, uh, actually includes four vowel qualities instead of three. So we have four situations. We have situation when it, uh, the, the vowels are open or closed in short vowels, and the U and E are uh, actually uh, pronounced differently here. So for example, in open like who, in open syllables like who, da, he, ba, uh, both are proper names, we, we see that it is an U and E sound. However, when it is uh, when the syllable is closed, we have an O and E sound like mur and uh, uh, and hijra, uh, uh, for example. Concerning the long vowels, uh, actually it, it tends to be uh, shortened when it, the the vowel is final. This is quite evident. Yeah, so actually, uh, other things that uh, I th uh, that are important to highlight is the changes of the diphthong. For example, the A and U, O that exist, that still exist in Sfax and Judeo Tunisian Arabic, are mainly transformed into U and E sounds, long U and long E sounds. Uh, that's it. So let's move to another uh, phenomenon, which is assimilation. Assimilation is the change of the phoneme by another one to actually uh, uh, simplify the pronunciation of, uh, of words and sentences. So there are three types of, of assimilation. Let's delve into them one by one. So there is the assimilation of the me vowels. So when were uh, actually appears at the beginning of the sentence followed by a consonant, it is assimilated as U, long U, like Uqf, 
it is pronounced as U-F. He stops. The same for Y. It is assimilated as uh, long E when it, it is at, at the beginning of the word followed by consonant. Like Y-Qul, it's pronounced as e -qul. He says. The second actually type of assimilation is the adjacent cons consonant assimilation. For example, when actually there are two consonant uh, sounds that are next to each other, and actually they are hard to pronounce, they actually are changed by another pair of consonants to simplify the pronunciation. For example, ta followed by ta is pronounced as a geminated ta. For example, a towel, she lengthens. This applies to many other, other uh, consonant pairs like ha with ha, ha with ga, and ta with ga, etc. The other type of assimilation is the assimilation of the definite article L. Well, the L of the definite article L is assimilated uh, to the following consonant when this following consonant is a sound consonant. So this Sound consonants also exist in modern standard Arabic. Uh, they, these include ta, tha, da, da, ra, za, sha, sa, dha, ta, la, na. However, there is a supplementary sound consonant in Tunisian that is not that does not exist uh, in modern standard Arabic, which is ja. So, for example, nahar, the river. Jarida, the newspaper. Well, uh, there is another phenomenon that is called the stress. The stress is when you push on uh, on a syllable actually uh, inside the word. So actually, there are there are some rules for for uh, for writing this. Uh, 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 for for finding out these uh, stressed syllables, and actually this is very important for writing foreign words, for example. So actually, uh, the rules are very simple. So when we have one syllable, so the the stress fall of the single syllable that's evident. When we have many syllables, three or more, uh, the stress falls on the penultimate syllable. But when we have two syllables. Actually, if the two syllables are both closed, the stress fall on the final syllable. But when one of them is not closed, one of the syllables of the two syllables are, is not closed, we the stress falls on the first syllable. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and actually, when uh, when there is an affix, actually. Uh, uh, after the word, actually, the affix counts. The stress rules applies to words with affixes as well. So you have the examples here. You can find out uh, what I mean exactly. Yeah, so uh, another phenomenon that is very uh, interesting is the elision and the parenthesis. The elision is when the first word vowel, short vowel of word is omitted when preceded by a uh, word ending with the vowel, as you see in the example. The epanthesis is uh, when an epanthetic A is added uh, to ease the pronunciation when the word starts with two successive consonants and the preceding word ends with a consonant, or when uh, an epanthetic E uh, is added to separate three successive consonants as shown in the examples below. Concerning the syllable structures of Tunisian, we have uh, three types of syllables. So we have the open syllable that ends with the vowel. We have a simply closed syllable with that ends with a short vowel, followed by a single geminated consonant and geminated consonant. And there is the double closed syllable, which is any other configuration. Well, uh, the the actually the pattern of the the syllables uh, in Tunisian Arabic for 
uh, actually is mainly consonants zero to three, followed by vowels, vowel, uh, followed by uh, actually zero to two consonants. We have another uh, phonotactic actually uh, phenomenon called the metathesis. It is simply defined as uh, when uh, the initial word, vowel of the word shift position in unconjugated verbs or nouns without suffixes starting with C, C, V, C structure. For example, ktib, he wrote, become kitbit, she wrote, or debshi, uh, my staff is without the E of uh, the meaning my, uh, it becomes besh, some stuff. So that, that's what we tried to do. Actually, we tried to create a unified pronunciation model capturing uh, common phonological features across the region Arabic uh, dialects. And we, we hope that uh, this actually uh, unified pronunciation uh, will be used in social linguistics in uh, NLP research today. Uh, our third and last work is called Normalized Orthography for Tunisian Arabic, and it is done with the collaboration of the Derja Association. So what we, we are trying to do here is that we are trying to revise the codec guidelines. So the codec guidelines is an ad hoc standard for writing Tunisian and other Arabic languages in Arabic script. It, uh, it is not actually uh, made, made from scratch. There are Precursors of the guidelines defined by Tahtistur, 1930s, Mahul et al, uh, 2005, Mamouri et al, 2004. Uh, the guidelines were created in 2012. Actually, they were adapted to uh, Tunisian Arabic. The code guidelines in 2014, actually, uh, the, there was a revision of the code guidelines called Coda Star published in 2018 and it uh, took into consideration the varieties of the Arabic uh, languages. Uh, and there were some uh, works about the normalization, the orthography normalization uh, based on the product guidelines uh, using some ad hoc and statistical methods. Yeah, so the guidelines to, to make it short and to define what product guidelines is, the guidelines assimilate terms to the transcribed Arabic varieties uh, uh, to the one of modern standard Arabic. They use the syntax and the typology of the words in modern standard Arabic, transcribe them in any uh, Arabic variety. So they check the similarity between words in modern standard Arabic and in uh, the Arabic uh, uh, dialect or language. And actually, they use that similarity to transcribe words. So this actually uh, causes many problems, including the need to learn uh, model standard Arabic to annotate text using code guidelines, the lack of adaptation for daily use, and the risk of inconsistencies between modern standard Arabic and other Arabic varieties. So we propose to solve these problems, actually. Uh, and to do that, we use the code guidelines as published by Zribi et al. Uh, and other people as well. Uh, and we use uh, a corpus of spontaneous Tunisian Arabic text in Arabic script created by Karan McLeod and Milad Faiza. And this corpus is openly available. So uh, what we do is that it's very simple. We actually uh, did uh, a workshop for technical tests uh, on 4 May and 24 of May 2017. And actually, what we have done is that we dictated a text excerpt to three groups. A group that you, has been provided the CODA guidelines, a group that is allowed to use the Tunisian Arabic corpus of Maknai at Faiza to see how to transcribe word, and the group that is spontaneously describing what has been dictated. And based on the on the results, actually we made some choices to adjust uh, Goda guidelines with the support of a group of applied linguists based on these observations. So to verify that these 
uh, adjustments do not exist actually already in the CODA guidelines. Actually, we verified uh, with the CAM lab at the New York University Abu Dhabi, uh, UAE, uh, actually to see if these guidelines are part of the CODA guidelines. If they are part of the CODA guidelines, we just uh, will request uh, some, some additions to the official website uh, that includes the CODA guidelines that exist below here, this is the URL. Uh, and if it, it is not, it does not comply uh, with the with the code guidelines, then we adopt it to our revision to the code guidelines. Yeah, so let's dive into our uh, findings. So we have five uh, actually revisions that we are proposing for uh, uh, for the code guidelines. This revision makes uh, the new guidelines that we are proposing the normalized orthography for Tunisian Arabic. So the first revision is that we use new letters to disambiguate between words, to reflect some phonological patterns, and to improve text to speech. So we propose three uh, uh, new, uh, actually, uh, phonemes, pa, va, and ga, and these phonemes do not exist in modern standard Arabic, so we add them. And actually, as we have uh, shown in uh, the phonology work, uh, actually we differentiate between A and E, and actually using this warakai, actually diacritic, uh, for the E uh, uh, sound, actually uh, we, we can do that, we can differentiate between the fatha, that stands for the A sound, uh, and the A sound. Uh, the second, and I think most important, uh, revision is the adoption of the morphology or where transcription. Uh, for, for example, uh, to develop uh, uh, morphology databases, construction grammars, grammatical framework, grammar matrix, or to develop lexical databases like ontologies and lexical. So this is very important because without that, we can find some inconsistencies that will prevent us to do such works. So let's explain what CODA does. So CODA find, has a word to transcribe. It finds similar modern standard Arabic word. It sticks to modern standard Arabic transcription. What we do at the Nota guidelines is that we have a word to transcribe. We find the MSA rule that can be used to transcribe the word. We transcribe the word using the rule, whatever its MSA transcription is. So that, that's, uh, that's what we do. So actually, we, we get inspired from the modern standard Arabic too. Yeah, so let's see a practical example here. So we have actually uh, uh, words, msha, to walk, ka, to cry, ja, to arrive, and da, to begin. So if you see in modern standard Arabic, it used, msha is in alif maqsura, ka in alif maqsura, so it, both are in alif maqsura in in Tunisian Arabic, ja is ja a -E -G -U. So we, we we eliminate the the glottal stop because it does not exist. So we we are left with ja with alif and g with ya. Bada a yabda u. Bada is hamza uh, on alif mad. So actually we keep the alif mad and the hamza is eliminated because actually. Uh, uh, it is eliminated in Tunisian Arabic, and we are left with the with uh, elephant. However, actually, uh, when we have have seen how how grammatically uh, uh, the the past uh, of verbs are transcribed, we found out that masha yamshi and bakayki actually are transcribed as shown here because the present verb actually finishes with the yeah. So evidently if the verb in present tense finishes with the yeah, actually uh, the verb should be uh, finishing with elef in the past and not elef 
So JG here, as as shown in by the code guidelines, is actually causes uh, it does cause uh, inconsistency that alters the identification of grammar rules, and consequently we need actually to adjust that. So what we propose here is to write Sha with Elf Masura. I know this is quite surprising and quite actually shocking, but actually I have another example that is more straightforward and actually can convince you of this fact. So we have here two uh, two nouns, two, uh, two verbs, uh, haba, to, to crawl haba in, in Tunisian, and shakka in modern standard Arabic, shakka in Tunisian, to complain. So we see that in Majam Wasid, the standard dictionary for modern standard Arabic, uh, they are both written with an elef met uh, at the end. So actually in code at white lines, uh, they, are, uh, they are written with elef met. But when we see why they are written with elef, because in the present tense, they are both written with the wow at, at the end. However, this is not the situation for Tunisian. Actually, the present uh, tense for ba and shka is yahbi and yishki, and there are examples for that. So this is not actually my own invention. So actually, to, to avoid such a consistency, it should be with elef maqsura and not elef mal. Uh, there, there are more and more uh, of such inconsistency and and uh, and exception, and actually morphology aware transcription can solve these issues. Actually, uh, morphology aware transcription can be even expanded to create a standard variety of Tunisian. Here you have an example about how actually to normalize the uh, the the imperative tense of, of verbs in, in Tunisian, and this works. Actually, we did a whole bunch of grammatical rules, standard grammatical rules for Tunisian using uh, this principle. And we have a book in Italian called Manuale di Arabo Tunisino, uh, written with uh, Pierluigi Fari, that actually uh, has been written based on this principle. So, uh, another principle that we are proposing is the disambiguation between omelets. So, if two transcriptions are possible, we adopt the less confusing one. For example, we have with what that is written as besh, and we have to or will, the modal verb, that is written as besh and besh. And because we have the besh that stands for with what, so we will not use besh uh, as to or will. So we will be using besh. And this is, and this is what, uh, what let us prevent some migration and make uh, our language clearer for for the the reader. Yeah, so we have uh, a revision for prepositions. So actually, we are trying to keep them separated from the nouns after them, uh, and we are trying to actually use the simplified uh, transcription, even for non-native speakers. And this is actually uh, we found. It, people using this actually convention across the internet and we think that we can adopt it. So actually there are two two forums, one before the different article L and one in other situation. And we have six prepositions in uh, Tunisian Arabic as shown in the table. There. The final and actually interesting uh, uh, revision uh, that is not in fact, adaptable to to other dialects because it is specific to Tunisian is the uh, definition of rules for the transcription of foreign words. So what we do is that we find out how uh, vowels are transcribed in Tunisian uh, and come up with the rule. So what we found out is that uh, actually there there are four groups of vowels. One are assimilated to a sound one is is, is trans, uh, uh, assimilated to a sound, one is assimilated to u sound, and one is assimilated to e sound. So the group in blue is assimilated to an e sound. It includes u, for example, etc. 
we have the A uh, group in green that includes the French A sound. Uh, we have the group in in uh, in gray that includes uh, O, for example, U, for example, U, and this group is assimilated as an U sound. And we have uh, the A, 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 A sound that is a group uh, that is assimilated to an A sound. So we have four groups, and according to the group of of uh, of the vo uh, vowel uh, 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 phoneme, actually we assimilate it to one of the four qualities of uh, Tunisian. So the rule is simple: when we have a stressed syllable, actually the vowel uh, comes short. When the vowel is unstressed, the vowel comes as long vowel, and it is transcribed the same as in Tunisian, with uh, one exception is that when uh, the final sound is A, uh, a in a word, actually it is transcribed as A with the swarakai, elephant, and ya. Yeah. So if we see some example, we find ordinator meaning computing, computer, loan word from French, and we see it is written as ordinator, or the na, na short and ter, and we found out that this transcription exists uh, across the internet. And if we uh, we see the transcription of fricassee, uh, fried bread, loan words from French, we see that it is written with as a fricassee, and this transcription also exists uh, a, a, a across the internet. So our uh, transcription is valid. Yeah, so actually, as a conclusion, we find out that uh, uh, that we can come up with some revisions of the code acquired lines, actually, uh, to simplify uh, the, the, the daily use of the code acquired lines uh and bridge the gap between the computation linguistic and uh, broader acceptance of standardized arabic script transcription of tunisian arabic uh and actually we hope that this note acquired lines actually uh is used uh for future research uh about the tunisian arabic nlp uh and even if not used actually uh completely it is the the note and revisions uh we hope that they are used uh, to actually revise uh the gold acquired lines for Tunisian Arabic and make more consistent uh actually uh, annotations of Tunisian Arabic text. Thank you, that's all. You can reach out to me using my mobile phone, my email. Uh so here is the also the URL of our research structure, you can find out our works, not only uh, related to applied linguistics, but related to semantic web, big data, social network analysis, etc. So thank you very much.